and just like that, I have an internship. Keep in mind that when I went to college in the fall semester, I had never written a line of code, and then I dropped out of college to teach myself how to write code, and now I have a software engineering internship. So this video, I'm going to be kind of walking through this semester off that I had while I was teaching myself how to code, preparing to become a software engineering intern and give any advice that I've kind of accumulated. I've read, you know, all the articles, all the Reddit posts, all of that, a little bit obsessive over it, probably too many. Like I should have just done more coding instead of reading another Reddit post. But that being said, I have accumulated a lot of knowledge in the field. So if you're interested in becoming a software engineer, or if you are not a computer science student interested in transitioning into computer science, then this really is going to be the video for you. Because like I said, I entered Seton Hall University as a business student, actually actually wound up falling in love with a computer science class that I that I took really just as an elective and here I am now going to Rutgers University in the fall as a computer science student a software engineering intern a research assistant position at Rutgers and uh, and things things are going pretty well for me so my name is Alex Bianchi and if you guys could please leave a like comment and subscribe it all really helps out the channel help me hit that 500 subscriber mark I'm really really close and without further ado, let's just let's just get into it. And speaking of getting into it, you need to start you need to start coding and applying to internships like yesterday. And I know it can kind of cause a lot of anxiety, like oh, internship season was you know in the in the early fall for next summer, which is crazy how how early you have to apply to some of these internships. But don't feel like you can't get an internship in your for a job that you applied in your spring semester because that's almost what I did. I actually I applied over the winter for my internship now and at the time I barely had any programming skills. I was basically at a CS 101 kind of level of programming and I threw together a resume. I built a few a couple like small projects and tweaked them off of some tutorials. So it was a horrible resume, sent it out to a bunch of companies, and actually the company that I'm interning for now is one is one of those from that original batch. I did keep applying afterwards, but it turns out that uh, that having applied earlier helped me out in this situation. But had I told myself that, oh no, I'm not a good enough programmer yet, which I was not at the time, um, that, and I didn't apply, then I wouldn't have made it. But that being said, you can't just apply and be like, oh yeah, I'm good enough, and then not code. So another big part is to start coding, start building those projects. I had some basically placeholder projects on my resume while I was building more substantial products, projects, a small REST API, a pathfinding visualizer, a ray tracer. Right now I'm working on the little 2T, 2D physics engine, which is so much more difficult than I thought it was going to be. But programming really is the best way to become a software engineer, no, go figure. And when you are programming, it, there's a lot of tutorials out there and I actually really appreciate tutorials as being a great way to kind of understand beginning to end what a technology might have to bring to you. So, so follow a couple tutorials on something that you want to build with and then use that to kind of build something of your own or springboard off of that tutorial because it isn't until you start writing your own code, debugging it and figuring out what went wrong that things really start to come together, all the code really starts to, you know, me meld in your mind and you become a programmer. Project ideas are really difficult to come up with. Most of the time I'll have an idea that is either way too simple or wildly complicated and I have no idea how to even start building it, but there is a little happy ground. Normally it, for me, most of my projects have been okay, really wild idea that I have and then I start working on it, realize that it's way too wild of an idea. But I just bring it down and simplify and simplify and it, it kind of sucks. Like it's definitely not the dream that you envisioned in the first place, but you're learning the whole way. And once you get kind of halfway there, you can definitely see the rest of the vision play out should you choose to go down that path. And if you want to put the time into it, then you definitely can. There's kind of a breadth versus depth question when it comes to projects. Should you do kind of all back end projects so that you can get a back end internship? Or should you do machine learning and back end and front end and and game engines and all that stuff. So, so breadth versus depth, in my opinion, it's fine for internships to do either. 
Uh, I've talked to a software engineer at Facebook. He said that breath was a good sign that you were really curious and passionate to learn. But in the end of the day, as long as you have some substantial projects on your resume, no matter what kind they are, then you're going to be able to pass those screenings with recruiters. And I will say that in my interview process, I definitely talked about my projects a lot. So make sure that you're not copy pasting code from a tutorial because you'll be screwed in the interview scenario when they start asking you why, how, this, that, the other thing. And another one of my interviews actually I sent them code to one of the projects and we talked about it so, so they do look at this code or at least they can okay so so far you have started to work on some projects you're starting to work on your programming skills even if you started that CS 101 level even if you're transitioning into computer science you were in a high school whiz kid you can still do those first two steps and now what well there's the interview prep should you choose to go down that route depending on the companies that you're applying to and there is the guerrilla warfare networking I'm gonna hit the network working first because that's my favorite part that's personally what I'm best at. So a lot of people just send their resume into the oblivion, they apply and they never talk to anyone in the company but you really need to make sure that you are emailing a hiring manager, a recruiter, somebody to just let them know that you're interested, interested enough to reach out to them and make your way to the top of their list. And sometimes that isn't enough. With the internship that I have this summer, I actually didn't even get looked at by a recruiter until I messaged the CEO on LinkedIn that I was that excited about his company and looked forward to the hiring process. I'll, I'll show you the message here. It really wasn't anything special, but he wound up sending that message down to the recruiter at the intern level and when it trickles down from the CEO, people are going to take it seriously. And that's how I got my phone screening. Now, from there, I'm not saying you can just, you know, email someone high up. And if it trickles down the right way, you get the internship. But it definitely helps you get to that interview process. I'm going to come out with an entire video about that kind of guerrilla warfare networking. I'm rather good at it. One time I started a TikTok about Gary Vaynerchuk and used it to get an interview uh, about a digital marketing internship, but that wound up falling through because of COVID. Long story, maybe I'll tell it. Uh, it is, there are already videos on my YouTube channel about it, so you can go check those out. Like, comment, subscribe while you're doing that. But the next part of this whole process is going to be preparing for interviews. And Leak Code, Algo Expert, popular platforms to prepare for your more traditional data structures and algorithms interviews. But it's also pretty important to keep in mind that for smaller companies like the startups or local companies that you might be applying to, they're not always going to ask you Leak Code questions. In my case, I only had one technical screening for this internship. I had to build a small component with Angular and I had to write a SQL query. I also had to pass a quiz on Java, but I don't know any Java, so I kind of just like used my intuition, and I don't think I did very well on that on that part, but the code for the Angular component was good. And funny story, I don't know Angular. I don't know TypeScript. <laughs> but I I looked at the documentation and I spent a long time on this assignment and I wound up submitting and I told them I left comments in the code that uh, sorry that this took me so long there was a timer keeping track of how long I was taking but I had to look at the documentation and learn angular and I I honestly think that that if anything helped me uh, win favor with the engineers they appreciated the craftiness and all that I could be wrong but that was the vibe that I got and when it does come to studying data structures and algorithms which for those of you who are really early on in the process don't know they're basically like little puzzles that you can solve with different programming concepts and you need to really be able to understand them so I recommend if you haven't taken a data structures and algorithms class yet you read a textbook on it I did I read data structures and algorithms in Python uh, you know, during this off semester, I had a lot of time, so I read the textbook, and then I started studying Algo Expert and looking at videos more curated towards specifically the interview process. Cracking the Coding Interview is another popular book. I haven't personally read it, but uh, but it is out there if you choose to go down uh, the the more book paths. I would recommend Algo Expert. It was a pretty good service. I don't know if it's worth the money. Leak Code can is free and more community based and can definitely get the job done too. So whichever path you choose to go down to kind of practice those interview style questions, great. When you're actually practicing, I'd say spend about a half an hour on a problem. Start with the easy ones. At, the, at first, the easy ones are going to be difficult, but eventually you will get to the point where the easy ones are something that you can bang out in 10, 15 minutes. 
Uh, that being said, when you are starting out, if it takes you a half an hour to solve it, that's okay. You can stop at around the half an hour mark and look at the answer, really try and understand the logic to the answer, all the different parts to it, all the different parts of the code in the programming language that you choose to take these interviews in. It's going to make you a better programmer. It's going to teach you how the some of the more theoretical aspects of computer science with data structure and algorithms and it's gonna help you prepare for coding interviews. And they kind of get a lot of flack on Reddit that these style of interviews aren't useful. I don't know how much I agree with that yet, but that's kind of, you know, that doesn't matter because it is what the interviews are based off of a lot of the time. So get studying data structures and algorithms and trust me in, in no time whatsoever, you're gonna be crushing out mediums and you're gonna get that awesome internship. There is another thing that I got accepted to this summer and that's a research assistant position in a psychology lab in Rutgers that studies cognitive bias in machine learning algorithms. And I really just got that by emailing the professor. So if your university is on the larger side, if they're known for doing undergraduate research, then feel free to start emailing professors. I was a transfer student. I haven't taken a class at this university yet, and I'm going to be a research assistant in one of their labs. So, so the opportunity is really out there if you just ask for it. And if there's one thing, all those little tips and tricks that you can find anywhere else on the internet, sure, if there's one thing that you take away from my video, it's that you need to be emailing people personal emails written out properly, proper English, give yourself a little introduction, not too long, but long enough that there's some substance in it. And if you really master the art of sending those emails, then I don't, I don't know. The, the opportunities that it has opened for me are just, I don't, I don't know how to quantify them. So now I'm pretty prepared for Lee code style interviews. I have a bang in resume. I have an internship this summer, a research position. And in the fall semester, I really plan on applying to those top, top, top interviews. I don't know, I don't know quite where I kind of land on the stack. If I'll be more fan, kind of Facebook, Amazon, Google, trying to pass their more traditional Lee code interviews, or if I might be able to go for a cool startup and intern for one of them. But uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting process. So please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Stick around to keep track of my journey. Every few months, I'd like to look back and kind of say, okay, what have I been doing? What advice can I give? And, uh, and this is that for, for getting your software engineering internship and transferring out of something else into computer science. That's going to be it for this video. Peace.